What's up everyone, Jimmy from MTB Travel Review here. Welcome to the channel. For those of you that don't know, outside of being just a mountain biker and an overall content creator, I am also an amateur enduro racer. So I spend a lot of my free time at the local enduro series, pushing my limits to see how fast I can go. That said, I've been racing for three or four years now, and between my day job, this content creation, racing, life, dog, girlfriend, everything else, I've never really had the time to tune in my fitness and get to the racing fitness level that I've wanted. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, let's call it a top 10 amateur enduro racer around here. So I've had a little coaching. I've, I've spent a little bit of time racing. I've had some success, even a top five or a top three a few times. But again, still a long way to go to get to that top level, even on the amateur stage. Now, in addition to my general fitness issues, because I just don't train consistently, so on and so forth, I also have had a severe cramping issue that's really built up over the last few years. It's gotten to the point now that even if I want to do a ride that's 10 or more miles, if, if there's a thousand feet of climbing, my quads are probably going to cramp out and it's leading me to the point that I can't continue my rides. I'm also having issues at the end of big race days where on those final stages of the enduro race, usually my legs are cramping and I can't push. It's pretty miserable. There's not much I can do except kind of curl up on the side of the trail and hope for the best, but it, it's becoming worse and worse and it's something that I really need to work on. So about eight months ago my buddy Ryan, who I ride with and race with all the time, convinced me that it would be a good idea to sign up for the Trans Madeira. Not sure if you've ever heard of the Trans Madeira, but it's essentially one of the hardest uh, blind enduro races in the world. Madeira is an island, a part of Portugal, also off of uh, Morocco, Western Africa, pretty much. Very mountainous. It is a five day stage race, completely blind. You race over 30 stages, over 25,000 feet of climbing. It's just an absolute feat. And something that with my lack of conditioning, my cramming issues, something that I would never really think about on my level. But the buddy Ryan can me to do it. So I figured I had about eight months to get in the best shape of my life, or I wasn't going to be able to finish this race, let alone have a good time. Now here's a little teaser. I'm actually making this video after completing the Trans Madeira. There it is. Five days, 30 blind stages, done. So I can tell you right now that I had the time of my life and in the six month of true training that I put in, I was able to not only step up my fitness to the level that I could finish a five day blind enduro race with over 27,000 feet of climbing and 50,000 feet of descending, but I also solved my cramping issue and went through the entire five days plus a practice day in the beginning without cramping at all in my quads. Completely blown away. I worked my tail off for this. And what I'm gonna do now is tell you guys what I did for the six month prior to this race to not only get into the best shape of my life, but to also beat my cramps. Now to add a little context, when this journey all started, I was well aware of my fitness and my cramping issues. And I've been slowly picking away at things that were gonna work in my favor to help me enhance. I always wanted to get faster. I always wanted to train harder. So I had a general idea of what would work and what wouldn't and what I needed to fix. Now, the first thing I really had to focus on to jump into this and, and step up my fitness and fix my cramping issue was of course nutrition and hydration. These are the two staples that everybody goes to when you're talking about racing, especially when you start talking about cramping. Oh, you don't have enough electrolytes. Oh, you're not intaking enough calories. Oh, your diet off of the bike may be just Alfredo sauce and hot dogs, which is definitely not going to help you. So the first thing that I addressed when I jumped into this six months of training was my nutrition and my hydration both on and off of the bike. Now when it came to nutrition on the bike, I'm a taller guy, I'm a bigger guy, I burn a lot of calories. My, burn, my body tends to burn things pretty quickly. I've always had a really fast metabolism. So I partnered up with Untapped Maple for my ride, fuel, and hydration. Now Untapped has a bunch of killer products made with organic maple syrup. They're local here in Vermont. There's something that I knew was delicious, nutritious, right up my alley, and something that I knew could fill all of the voids on the 
bike when it came to my caloric intake and my hydration. So when it comes to caloric intake, they have a waffle that I was using on the trail pretty much every 30 minutes or so. They also have some maple syrups that you can consume on the trail. And they even have a hydration product, which is essentially uh, maple syrup, ginger, salt, a little more electrolytes that you actually add into your water. So checking off the list of nutrition on the trails, hydration, getting those electrolytes and those extra calories was pretty easy. I just started eating more. I would try to eat or drink a syrup every 30 minutes or so. And then I would also add this uh, untapped hydration formula to my water every 30 minutes or so to give myself the electrolytes and the extra caloric intake. Off of the bike, I had to focus a little more. Now, don't get me wrong. Everybody has their approach. I'm not a big guy in diets. I don't like to use the word. Uh, my coach from Cyclecraft Fitness always says, don't diet, but try conscious eating. And I really like that. I used to be a chef. I love food. One of the reasons I ride my bike is that I can eat more. So I didn't want to be on this super strict, only boiled chicken and rice type diet. Never going to work for me. But what I can do and what I did is focus on more conscious eating. So conscious eating, meaning think about where you're putting into the body. Try to stay away from super fatty Alfredo sauces and cookies and the pint of Ben and Jerry's I used to eat every night before bed. Those are the things that were clearly not only hindering my ability to stay in a good shape, but also eating before bed messes up your sleep. There's all of these things that happen when you have just a really poor diet. My diet wasn't the worst in the world, but again, could definitely be better. So I did that. For six months, I really focused on, you know, less Alfredo sauce, really cooking all my own local grass-fed meats, a lot of vegetables, a lot of unprocessed foods, a lot less cookies and ice cream. And it had a big effect. I only lost maybe 15 pounds, but for someone of my body size and shape, that 15 pound goes a long way. And by eating better, losing a little bit of weight, it's less body that I have to move around the trails. And in my eyes, it's going to help me cramp less. And again, the fitness, the cramping, that was my big target. Now, since I was going to be doing a lot of more training and riding, I also knew that I needed to step up my protein to help my muscles recover. So that's where my partner sent protein came in. Spent many a days waking up early, hammering out a really good protein, either plant-based or whey animal-based protein smoothie in the morning or as a midday snack, just something to give my body a little more fuel to burn. I'm not great at eating enough meals or eating consistent meals throughout the day. So that's where something like a really good protein smoothie comes in for me and definitely helped me along the way. So there you have it. As far as nutrition, hydration, and the overall fueling on and off the bike, kind of in my wheelhouse. So I really just stepped things up and started to focus a little more. But I knew that was just the first piece of the puzzle. So now that I had my nutrition and hydration both on and off the bike dialed and knew what I had to do and knew that I just had to step things up, it was time to move on to the next subject, which is riding time. I knew if I was going to compete in a five-day stage race and ride hundreds of miles, which is more than I'm used to, I really need to step things up and get more time on the bike. Now, since I live in Northern Vermont, uh, the <laughs> initially in, in that six month training window, I did spend a lot of time ski touring down the street. So walking my skis up a mountain and skiing back down, which really helps with my cardiovascular. And then I had to do a lot of time on the roller trainer on my trainer bike inside the house. So the first couple months were tough, but I stayed consistent and I rode three to four times a week or ski toured three to four times a week to really get things moving, get my heart rate up and just get into better shape overall. Once things started to warm up a little bit, I jumped into my April challenge with Team Granite, where you ride for at least 30 minutes outside every day in April. That helped a ton. Hello friends, TG, April challenge day 27. It's about 30 degrees out, decent wind from every direction. What a day for it. And then as things got nicer and nicer out, I got into bigger rides. So still riding three to four days a week, but some bigger rides where maybe I'm doing four to 5,000 feet of climbing on the gravel bike or the mountain bike, doing some rides with my faster buddies. And, and again, just increasing that overall time on the bike to give me the fitness that I needed to do bigger rides like the enduro race I was getting ready for. And with everything else, it's consistency. Consistent time on the bike is going to make you better. It's going to make you in better shape. It's gonna make you better mentally. So I knew that all this would lead me towards a goal of being in better shape and, and hopefully defeating my cramps. Now the riding part was the easy part. The one piece of the puzzle that I was really missing for myself and in my training over the last few years, I knew was real strength and mobility training. And I'm not just talking about throwing some weights around in the base 
basement and doing some push ups once a week. I knew I wanted to work with a personal trainer to figure out, first of all, how to get my fitness to the next level with some strength and mobility training. And then if there was possibly an imbalance or something going on that was leading my body to cramping in certain areas during rides, which like I said, was getting worse as the years have progressed. I was working with Cyclecraft Fitness and Willem Cooper, but they're down in Southern Rhode Island and I just moved up to Northern Vermont. So I reached out to Burlington PT after they had been recommended to me a few times and started working with Sarah Livingston. Now, Sarah and I had a, had a good meetup early on. We talked about my issues and the cramping and getting my overall fitness up and also working on some, some sprint power, some really explosive power, which is something that I've never done and I thought that I was lacking. So I jumped into a pretty heavy program with Sarah for about four months. This was two to three days of fitness a week. Some of it was on hand with her. Most of it was on my own at home, but she would put together, she put together a program where every workout was different. She would mix things up. There was a lot of mobility. There was a lot of kettlebell movements and body weight movements and then some explosive stuff with like jumping deadlifts with the squat rack and stuff. So it was a really, really great training program and it was really painful and really hard to stay on it. But I could tell week after week, more so month after month that things were changing. And ultimately by the end of it, not only did I feel like I was in the best shape of my life, I had a six pack for the first time ever, which is pretty cool. Ever, I haven't had one since I was in my 20s. It was a long time ago. But I could also tell that my body was reacting differently. I felt strong. I sat different. I had better control on the bike. And I really just felt like my muscles were firing better. My cramping issue was primarily in my vastus medialis. I'll show you the image here of where that is. But basically, it's the quad muscle that wraps around the inside of the knee. And I could never figure out why it was always in that area, usually on both legs. But it turns out that I had a severe muscle imbalance. I was relying on certain muscles to take the brunt of my pedaling and my attack stance and my quads instead of usually those hip flexors, instead of using more of my glutes. And all of these are things that I had heard of. But before I had worked with a personal trainer and really jumped into a strength program and worked through all of these things, I had no idea what I was doing. So needless to say, this four month program that I worked with Sarah on and everything that she put me through had clearly paid off. Now, I had worked on the nutrition and the hydration both on and off the bike, going in the right direction. I had focused on my riding and my consistency, road riding, gravel riding, whatever it is, I knew I had to stay consistent for the six months leading up to this to get in that fitness window that I needed. And then there was the strength and mobility training with a personal trainer, which I now highly recommend. Because I can tell you sitting here that I did the five day Trans Madeira stage race, over 150 miles of riding, 30 blind stages, over 27,000 feet of climbing with a 32 pound bike. Some of it with the bike on your shoulders, literally hike a biking up a mountain or two. And then over 55,000 feet of descending. It turns out I actually felt great for most of the time. Mind you, it was pretty torturous. It was not by any means easy. One of the hardest things I've ever done, but I did not cramp, not once the entire time, which is an amazing feeling. It turns out that my hands were ultimately the biggest issue. With over 55,000 feet of descending, I simply, I usually descend that much elevation in about a year's worth of riding. So it was just a lot on my hands and the arm pump was pretty serious. But otherwise, my training and everything that I worked on really paid off. And it was the best feeling when I finished that race with my buddy Ryan. It was absolutely incredible and something I would love to do again. And now I'm even interested in doing some other trans races because I know that I can handle them. Six months ago, I literally didn't know if I'd be able to finish the Trans Madeira, let alone have a good time. I put in the work. I got to work with people that were smarter than me and really good at what they do. I worked with some great products to help me get to where I needed to go and it's the most rewarding thing I've done in a long time. Now, if you like the video, make sure you like. If you have anything to add, leave some comments below. Let me know what you think and make sure you subscribe if you like the channel. I'm gonna be releasing a day-by-day -day story on the Trans Madeira and I'm really excited to share with you the adventure that we had over there. It was a killer time. Keep riding, guys. You.